Hey guys, it's me, Stormy, and it's time to talk about this full moon lunar eclipse that we're going to have that is going to make a big impact as we come right here into January 2020. It is literally setting the stage, and there is so much to discuss around this particular moon, around the um, Saturn-Pluto conjunction, around the Jupiter and South Node conjunction. There is just so much happening around this moon that not only personally will we feel it in our lives, but this is huge globally as well. So I look forward to talking talking to you about everything that's going on. Now, before I jump in, please keep in mind that Astrology 101 and 102 are now open for enrollment. And if you'd like to get signed up, study live with me every week for 12 weeks, get you set reading these charts, uh, go ahead and get signed up down below, okay? All right, let's jump in here and let's talk about everything that is happening. So to do that, first of all, we've got to back up just a couple days from the 10th of January, which is when the actual lunar eclipse is happening. On the 12th of January is when we've got the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, which will also play into this. But we have got to back up to the 8th of January. Now, if you haven't had a chance to check out your um, January monthly video for your sign, rising sign, whichever one you listen to, feel free to check that out because I talk a little bit about this in there as well. But what's going to happen on the 8th of January is that we're going to see that Jupiter, who's here in Capricorn, is going to come into conjunction with the south node, the transiting south node that is also here in Capricorn. Now, this is a big deal. This is important. This is a stage setting kind of energy because Jupiter is wisdom, right? He's wisdom. He's He's endurance, he's understanding, and understanding at a higher level, at a global level, at a bigger level, at a bigger, bigger spiritual understanding, international understanding, and things like that, which are going to be important when we focus on the global perspective of this. But that transiting south node is about the past, right? It is about what has been and that you're ready to detach to or what the soul is asking you to detach from, to move away from. Being in the energy of Capricorn, some of these things at the personal level are going to be, what are the things that you've been doing that you have decided they have to be this way? Or someone taught you or told you, nope, you only get to have this kind of job. You have to do it this way. This is the way things are, right? Jupiter and that south note coming to conjunction, you're in reflection on the 8th and the 9th about what have I been told things have to be and maybe I need to detach from that in order to use this moon as it comes along to its fullest to move towards something different. Where have you felt small? Where have you felt like there's been pressure or oppression or just kind of this authoritarian energy that you need to detach from? For some people at a very personal level, it will just be um, male energies, right? Or very authoritarian energies that you are detaching attaching from because you no longer believe that that set of circumstances is what's absolutely right for you. So as we travel through the 8th and the 9th and we're looking at the south node Jupiter conjunction on the work, what you want to keep in mind is that these are days of reflection. You've got to see what your history is, what your past looks like, um, what in your past is actually still valuable as well that you're going to be able to bring forward, right? This is a set of reflecting days that are very important to understand how to set your stage moving forward. Now, I do want to address this globally as well. This is a big deal. A couple things come to my mind just as I'm continuing to study and learn with you as well. First of all, because Jupiter is that it's a global wisdom as well. It's very big. This goes not just state to state, person to person, but this is an international global kind of understanding as well. And it is also connecting with the South Node. At the global level, we're looking at where has the government said that this is the way things have to be? Where has society said this is the way things have to be, right? What has happened in our history, whatever country you're from? What has happened in your history that we might need to pay attention to because we're starting to see the scene get set for it again? And instead of getting back in there, we want to move away from it, right? There's all this stuff going around the internet about, yay, bring back the roaring 20s, right? Oh, okay, well, yeah, the 20s were great. We did a lot of advancement, but the 20s were not great for everyone, and the 20s set the stage historically for some things that we didn't love as we moved forward, right? So where, at a global level, at your community level, um, are you seeing these opportunities to look back over the history? Because there are things in our global histories that were beautiful, right? There are also things in our global history 
histories that were not great, but if we don't look at them and we don't learn them and understand them, we will repeat them, right? So it's a really big kind of energy that day to be breathing in, okay? Now, as we get through the 8th and the 9th and we come to the 10th, we've got this full moon lunar eclipse happening at 20 degrees of Cancer. So down here, in opposition to all of this Cancerian energy, we've got Saturn, Pluto, Ceres, uh, Mercury, the Sun, the South Node, Jupiter, everybody is up there in that big Cancerian energy, right? That authoritarian kind of energy taking on this one small but very powerful, very impactful um, indirect energy of a Cancer moon. So just to be specific too, I know that I have some sky watchers out there and I love you guys. Um, if you do want to be able to see this, you need to be in Australia, Asia, Africa or in Europe. Sorry, North America, we're not as visible for this one, but we'll still all get the impact, so don't you worry about that. Okay, now because this lunar eclipse is in the energy of Cancer, we have to think first of all, what is Cancerian energy about? First of all, like I said, Cancer is typically an indirect energy, right? They're going to go about things kind of indirectly not necessarily loving to be so exposed so they kind of go indirectly. Remember the crab kind of walks sideways, right? If you've ever watched crab walk, they walk sideways. So anyways, so we have that kind of indirect way that we're gonna get things done, but what are we focusing on? Um, home, family, nurturing, and nurturing can be loving and actually touching and holding, or how do we nurture by nourishing our bodies with food. It is about security. It's about protection. It's about um, really making sure that our emotional needs, our parents, our childhood, um, but that we feel emotionally safe and secure. So these are kind of the energies we're working against or working with, right? And this is also, if you just know your energies, this is a feminine energy that this particular moon is happening in. So it's going to tap into the influence of feminine energies or softer, more indirect, more receptive energies. And that is taking on a fair amount of masculine energy at the top. So literally, at every full moon, we have the oppositions happening, right? The sun is always opposite the moon. And this is no different. This is just a more impactful kind of energy. So it's going to highlight our needs versus our wants. My, do I stay home versus what is my space in society? Um, all of these polar opposites. And it can be at a very emotional level. Right? So if you're feeling pulled in kind of a couple different directions, what ties your family life to your community life, these kinds of things, just know you're in the right boat. Now, a full moon in and of itself says that we need to end something, we need to acknowledge something, or we need to make an adjustment in some way, shape, or form. So wherever 20 degrees of cancer is happening for you, you're going to look because it's giving you the roadmap to where do we need to adjust? We need to step up into this. And it's because we've got the north node which is opposite that south node that was saying, hey, here's what we did in the past. So this lunar eclipse is also saying, what do we need to adjust or move towards? Where do we need to make things more secure, right? So typically a full moon gives us the impact for about four weeks. This lunar eclipse, we're gonna work with this energy for about six months and remember, eclipses and moons, they all tie together. So you've also got another piece of your roadmap. Think back to what was happening for you at the December 26th solar eclipse. This is an attachment of that. What was happening for you? What things were shifting? What was coming into your perspective? It would have been happening in the Capricorn energies. So what were you seeing then? And now you're going to get to make some corrections to it now. And you'll also get to peek in on how your adjustments are going at the next moon on January 24th in Aquarius, right? And of course, when we get to the end of summer, we're gonna see another eclipse happening in this Cancerian energy. So these all tie together, but that's kind of your timing to watch how your progress is going, okay? All right, so along with everything that's happening at this moon, we're just, we're ending, acknowledging, and adjusting. We are also gonna have to see who else is working on this side of the street. So at this particular full moon lunar eclipse, We've got the moon, of course, in an opposition to the sun, but the sun is not traveling alone up there this time, my friends. The sun is in conjunction with Mercury up here, taking on in opposition this moon, okay? So, 
Sun and Mercury together. This is information, right? I'm getting information and it's in the energy of Capricorn. So it's got to be specific, exact, mature, precise. That's Mercury information. The sun is motivated to gather the information, right? So one of the things that comes up for me as I look at this for us personally and globally is this idea of at this moon, I can't just see things for how I feel like they should be, right? Like I need to move towards that. I need to move towards making it better, making it more secure, but I can't just see it for what I feel like it should be. I've got to get the facts, right? I've got to see it for what it is. I'm taking on a lot of reality. This is one little moon taking on a lot of reality here. So in your life, where are you needing to get some more clarity? Where are you needing to um, see that you've got to actually make some changes in order to allow this security to live? You've got to make different decisions up here at a very um, community level or public level or material level. This is a Capricorn energy. It's an earth sign, so it's in the material. Where do you have to make some changes in the material to allow them to bring your security to reality, right? So this is an interesting opposition, but certainly this Mercury Sun conjunction is going to bring to our table um, the challenge of looking at things as they are, not as we want them to be. Now, another player, and I don't talk about her too often, but I feel like it's completely relevant this time. Another player we've got in the game here is that we've also got the Sun Mercury in a conjunction with Ceres. So this will also take on some opposition here as well to this. Now, moon. Ceres is an asteroid, and Ceres is said to be the um, the sister sister of Zeus or the sister of Jupiter, right? So Ceres is just this, she's the coolest sister ever, you know? She's the earth mother is what we call her over food, um, nurturing, nourishment, nutrition. Ceres is also hard work and providing. Where the Ceres energy is at, it tells us how we best feel secure and how we best feel nurtured, right? But now we've got what makes me feel secure being it's taking it on my most secure energy, right? So I'm having to look at, we're all having to look at our securities in a very real way, right? Again, I talk about at a global sense, how do we nurture and help and love and support each other under the structure that does need to be there, a guiding structure, right? while we're in opposition to how do I feel about what's going on. So this is an energy that is going to be, I think, a lot of liberation gets to come from here if we're willing to see things that we need both of these areas. We need the feels plus the structure in order to make progress. It's almost here. this idea, I feel like, where it's like, yes, we want to nurture, we want to love, we want to just have these, these global communities that are all love, but we've also got to have structure and boundaries because if not, you know, boundaries are not about keeping you out and keeping me in. It's about letting the universe work us in an appropriate balance so everybody's playing the correct role for what we've got going on. So it's a really interesting kind of energy next to the sun and Mercury. We are gathering some correct facts. Now, Jupiter being here as well, just in the energy of Capricorn, the work that we're doing here to expose what we really need to see, Jupiter is giving us a lot of endurance. He's giving us a lot of wisdom. He's giving a lot, us a lot of safety to grow and to learn um, in this time of developing. What are our new securities going to look like? Now, what is also going to be happening just a day later that I think very much so plays into this moon as well is that, first of all, on the 11th, we've got Uranus who's going to come out of retrograde, okay? Now, Uranus has been retrograde since 2019, so he's been going back over things in our life and saying these structures, these beliefs, these ideas, especially in the energy of Taurus, some of these material things don't work anymore. We need to freshen this up. We need to innovate here in some way, shape, or form. Now, as Uranus is out of retrograde and he's ready to move forward, remember Uranus is an energy of rebellion, right? We've got a, a heavy earth sign energy here in the energy of rebellion or do it different, right? This is also taking on all of the earth energies up here. So one of the things I do think of is truly in your material realm, where does this need to look different? Do you need to be being prepared in your finances in some way, shape or form? Are you changing houses? Um, 
You know, where are you willing to stand up for yourself, right? Because let me tell you what, Uranus is not taking any. He is just not taking any. He is willing to tell you, no, I don't agree with that. No, I don't believe with that. With Capricorn being a very public sign, where are you needing to step up in your communities or even just in your household and say, no, it cannot be that way anymore. I'm running ragged over here or no, I can actually step up. I am available to take on a little bit more. You know, Uranus is just not going to take any. So where does this help? you stand up because this will lead this is going to lead you but this will help you as well where do you need to step up do something different innovate in order to allow your security to continue to grow your nurturing your your giving your nourishing of your soul and the soul of others as well right now as we look we can see that we've definitely got some cool interactions also happening between this Saturn and Pluto conjunction that's also happening on the 11th. So the 11th is a busy day, my friends. We have just got a lot going on that day. The 8th through the 12th, just put your put your pin down, you know what I mean? Just enjoy what's going on because we are shifting. And for some people, it may be the 12th, just depending on where you live, that you see this Saturn and Pluto conjunction. But with Saturn and Pluto coming into conjunction, now first of all, this is a slow evolutionary change that's been happening. It's a rare planetary alignment. We haven't seen it since the 80s, so this is a big deal. This is a generational thing that's happening as well. So understanding how this long awaited conjunction is gonna work in your favor or to shift you or to change you or to allow this lunation to take you to the next place I think is quite now, one important. of the things at this moon that that Saturn and Pluto conjunction continues to give me the idea of is truly we've got to find a new innovative way to increase our securities going forward and it may not be what we've been told it has to be so as Saturn and Pluto are coming together Saturn is saying we have to die off in this way this doesn't work anymore so that we can live in that Phoenix energy in a different way and Saturn's like yep I'm gonna spiritually maturely take us along to this next level right so in order to do the restructuring Capricorn of our states our governments our homes our boundaries our internal structures whatever it is that we've got but a lot of this is very much so in the material plane we have to kind of feel a pull there has to be a catalyst at this Saturn and Pluto conjunction that maybe even feels a little bit like loss or it feels like shock or it feels like something has happened there that has created a hole and we recognize I've got to do this down here I've got to innovate in order to restructure up here now remember that Jupiter south node conjunction that happened on the 8th it is all guns ablazing to move forward you guys after the 12th let's move forward let's take new actions but what may happen is that we realize oh hold on we still have to pay attention to what happened in the past so that we don't move forward in the same way but the things from the past that worked we also need to see how to continue those and to continue to advance those and truly I'm telling you in January, if there are things that you need to be accountable for, if you've somehow made a mess, if you've somehow done harm in some way, shape or form, or you're cleaning up debt or you're cleaning up relationships, this is a month to own your stuff and get ready as we move forward to clean that up so that your security can rise. You have done it different to restructure your world. Now we've got one other helper that I think is brilliant in this equation as this full moon happens, is we have got a beautiful, beautiful trine between Neptune and this moon. Neptune is such a helper here in this trine. Now, first of all, a trine is a pocket of opportunity that brings some ease. It brings a little bit of harmony. Both Neptune and the moon are associated with water and emotions and the feminine energies and qualities. So there is a receptive ease that is here. So one of the things that I think that Neptune provides in this trine is an understanding of sensitivity, an understanding of forgiveness, of compassion, of we have to move between the worlds while also seeing Seeing the world for what it is. We have to move between the worlds with the ideal, with also moving in the actual physical material world um, with what is here. This is a space where, you know, at this time with all of these catalysting energies happening, our religious leaders, people with very strong beliefs that are not beliefs about harm, they are beliefs about peace. And I expect truly 
at least in the United States. I expect us to see more people who are surrounded by causes or have strong beliefs in causes coming together. Even if they've had different opinions for a very long time, we could see them coming together saying, oh, hold on, history says if we do this, we're gonna set ourselves up for a problem, right? It's almost as if those lines of I'm Democrat or I'm Republican or you know whatever the two sides are kind of gets blurred and people have to start working together for the forwarding of humanity. Because if not, if we start to have the separation and segregations again, we're going to see history just repeat itself. So it's an interesting influence where Neptune, I think, comes as a reassuring guide that there is good happening. There is the in-between the world's innovation available to us here as well. In your personal life, this just may give way to a tidal flood of compassion and forgiveness that helps you to move forward. Maybe your meditation life gets to adjust because whatever it is, you are trying to up your security, up your nourishment, up your, your love for yourself and others, up this particular energy over the next six months while also working within this energy up here in that Capricorn bubble. So, man, I think it is just such a very big time, you guys. As I'm recording this video, there is a lot happening here in the United States that I'm aware of, and I can't tell you because I don't read the Arabic um, newspapers, so I don't fully know everything that's happening over there. I can just express as I'm learning over here. So, as things are happening for you, and you can see them in the astrology, not in the political sphere, not in the let's fight about it, but in the astrology, I would love to hear from you because we are watching things change. So uh, thank you for letting me guide you through this video. I hope I stayed on track and was also able to share some of the things that I am learning along with the beautiful astrology that we've got set up. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the new moon video for um, January 24th, which will be in the energy of Aquarius. I love you all. Bye.